So in today's videos, we are going to look how the induced GMF in a transformer will lag behind the main transformer core flux. I will draw a transformer here. Now see closely here. If I draw a transformer, I will draw from here. So it will be very easy to all you to understand in today's code topic. So here I have drawn this is the transformer core and this is I am going to draw the transformer winding. This is the transformer winding and also I am drawing the transformer winding on the other port here. Okay. So this is two port basically we can say this is the transformer winding this is the transformer core right and here what I am doing here I am giving a supply so in those side I am giving the supply basically you can say in this side I am giving supply so I will call this is the primary side okay this is called the primary side so I am giving this voltage V1 to the primary okay I will write this is the primary side of transformer primary side of transformer either I can say this is the primary winding okay so this is the primary winding and we are giving the supply to the primary side of the transformer so I can give this is the primary winding so I can write this is the this contain the number of turns is n1 and this is the secondary side I can write this is the secondary side this is the secondary side of the transformer okay and that contains the n2 number of turns that contains the n2 number of turns so i can say this is the primary winding this is secondary winding okay fine now next see here now to produce the flux in this transformer core we have to give a such amount of the current which is able to produce the flux okay so here i will give a current and that current basically known as the i mu okay and this i mu current this I mu current I can define this is the magnetizing current I can define this is the magnetizing current now what it means the magnetizing current this current is responsible to produce the flux in the transformer core okay so this is the magnetizing current or or we can say this is the reactive current also we can say it a reactive current also we can see it a reactive current so because of this magnetizing current now there will be the flux setup in the transformer core now the question will be arises that how the flux is going to set up in this transformer core now slow now look uh, look here if this current i mu is passing to this number of turns i will take this i mu so I will write this is the I mu into N1 which is going on the primary side so this is called the primary MMF what I can say what I can say I can say this is the primary MMF so as per the flux as per the flux we know the flux we can define this is nothing but the MMF by reluctance what is the flux uh, what is the flux we can define flux is nothing but the mmf by reluctance okay so we'll choose a core so we'll choose a core which gives the lesser amount of the reluctance okay and will give a sufficient amount of the mmf which gives the sufficient amount of the flux in the transformer core okay so this magnetizing current which is responsible for set up the flux in the transformer core that has to be in some range so i can say here this magnetizing current will be in the range of you can say 4 to 6 percent of the full load current so this magnetizing current has to be in the range of 4 to 6 percent of the full load current only now the question arises if I'll increase this I mu more than this range then what will happen to a transformer okay and why and why we are why we are taking this I mu only to the range of 4 to 6 percent so about this question I'll give the answer in the coming videos 
okay but right now uh, we our our uh, topic is to focus about the induced gmf how induced gmf is going to lag behind the flux so okay so about this topic i'll give the explanation in the later videos now see here because now the as per the giving the supply voltage the current imu has taken from the supply side and now this imu is responsible for setting up the flux in the transformer core right and this flux basically is alternating in nature okay so this flux is flux is what we can say this flux is what a alternating in nature now what it means alternating nature means what it's changing we can say this flux we can say this flux is what this flux is changing this flux is what this flux is changing with respect to time we can say okay so here you can see here because this flux is alternating in nature so as per the as per the you can say the faraday's law the emf will induced the emf will induce so if this flux will link to secondary side or secondary winding the emf is induced we will say it the secondary induced emf e2 and this flux not only links with the secondary side but also links with the primary side so it's give the primary induced emf that is called the e1 so secondary induced emf is called e2 and primary induced emf is called e1 and this primary induced emf is also known as the back emf is also known as the back emf which is used to limit the magnetizing current very important applications now see here this induced emf is occurring here now see here what i done so this mmf this mmf so we can write so we can write the flux will be equal to what this right we can write i mu into n1 upon what reluctance i am writing the reluctance as r e l here as a short abbreviation right and this i mu so i mu is the magnetizing current so i can write the i mu is equal to i m sin of omega t i can write this i mu is equal to i m sin of omega t okay so now if i'll put this value here so this i mu i can write this n1 by this become the reluctance okay and i mu value we can put this is what the i m sin of omega t this is what given the i m sin of omega t so i can write this flux is equal to what n1 into i m divided by the reluctance divided by reluctance into sin of omega t now if the question arises if the question arises that at for what angle we'd get the maximum amount of the flux okay so for what angle we'll get the maximum amount of flux so if we'll take if we'll take the omega t is equal to pi by 2 okay so in this condition we'll get the maximum flux and whose values will be how much that is the n1 i am by reluctance so i can write the flux equation is become phi max sin of omega t right so we can write this phi equal to what phi max sin of omega t now see here the induced emf is occurring in the primary side e2 is the secondary induced emf occurring on the secondary side so if i'll take the induced emf of the primary side so as per the faraday law i can write this e1 is equal to minus n1 d phi by dt okay this negative sign so this phi the lange law d phi by dt this flux is going to be constant that's why i'm writing the only phi i'm not writing this phi one because the flux is going to be constant okay because the transfer is a transformer is a constant flux device now see here if i have written this e1 equal to minus n1 d phi by dt so i can put the value of phi so i can put the value of phi minus n1 this become the d by dt and phi i'll put this become the phi max sin of 
omega t. So if I differentiate this term, so this becomes the induced EMF E1 is equal to minus N1 phi max sin omega t gives the cos omega t and omega t gives the omega. So omega cos of omega t. So I can resolve it and I can write the E1 will be equal to I can write the E1 will be equal to minus N1 phi max omega so I can write it so I can write it sine of omega t minus pi by 2 so I can write the primary induced EMF in this fashion so you can see here the number of terms is going to be fixed so I can say here the primary induced EMF will lags behind this flux the maximum flux by an angle about 90 degree ok so we can say so we can say the primary induced EMF we can say the primary induced EMF will lags will lags the will lags the flux by an angle by an angle 90 degree or pi by 2 we can say. So this is the conclusion that the induced EMF of the primary side will lags behind the main core flux by an angle about 90 degree. Similarly in this fashion I can also write the equation for the secondary side of the transformer. The secondary induced EMF I can write this gives the E2 equal to I can write this E2 will be equal to what? This become the N2 phi max omega okay sin of omega t minus pi by 2 so this will become the equation this will become the equation for the secondary induced EMF so I can write E2 equal to N2 phi max omega sin of omega t minus pi by 2 similarly also you can see from here the secondary induced EMF will lag behind this flux by an angle about 90 degree. So this is the very important concept while drawing the while driving the phasor diagram of the transformer. So we'll take I'll, I'll just draw the phasors for the flux and the induced EMF because this is our topic. So if we'll, while we're drawing the phasor diagram of the transformer, we'll take the constant phasor. We'll take the constant phasor flux flux in the x axis you can say and because as per this equation equation number one equation number two it is very easy to find that the induced EMF on the both side the E1 and E2 will lags behind the flux by 90 degree that's why this induced EMF E1 if I write this induced EMF E1 or E2 of having the same amount so E1 and E2 will lags behind this flux phi by angle about 90 degree. So this is very important uh, features while uh, driving the phasor diagram of a transformer and also this is very important competitive uh, question that uh, by how, how much amount that the induced level is going to lags behind or lead behind the corresponding flux okay so this is the complete explanation of the our topic that how the emf induced in the transformer will lags behind the flux okay so the conclusion is that the induced emf in the transformer will lags behind the flux by an angle about 90 degree okay